There's a recipe for happiness. I wasn't looking, not at first. Then my friend Susan's life began to turn around. And I mean, it really turned around for her. Her breast cancer went into remission practically overnight. She'd been unemployed because cancer. But now she got a new job that doubled her salary and she loves it. Then there's Eric, and while he didn't have a big problem, as Susan, he'd just been chronically disappointed of how his life has turned out. We talked about it a lot, before he got his card. There's a lot more upbeat now, and he's starting to pick up new hobbies, and he's just... seems happy. So I asked him what changed, and he told me, as a recipe for happiness. He found out about this from Susan, so I talked to her too. I thought they were just pulling a prank on me. But then Laura and Sam found out about the recipe, and they received their index card. And now things have changed for Laura, at least. Sam died. I haven't yet decided what I wanted to do while my index card arrived. I admit, I was thinking about it. Who doesn't want to be happy after all? The cost scared me a little. Okay, it scared me a lot. Seeing Eric smiling is great, but I keep staring at his ears, where the earlobes are neatly clipped off in a straight line on both sides. He used his kitchen shears, he said, and he advised me to splurge on a really high quality pair if I needed them. Then there's Susan, and while it's great that she's not going to, you know, die, she always wears long sleeves at all time, now to height, where she used a vegetable peeler to remove a strip of skin from her wrist to her shoulder. The first index card wasn't too scary at least, the instructions were written in pen, in tidy handwriting, a list of ingredients, and then numbered steps. It was a symbolic sacrifice. I thought I'd just go ahead and make the recipe, because it wasn't that hard, and I could quit any time, and there didn't seem to be any consequences. Tim chickened out on the last card, and he's been fine. Other than the actual exhaustion from working two jumps, but that's nothing new. My first meal was ravioli with cream sauce, garnished with a shredded letter from my grandma. She passed away five years ago. I'm not even a great of a cook, but I followed the instructions on my index card, exactly as they said, and it turned out great. I suppose I got lucky in that. I only had to eat paper. Susan made a squash soup that included the ashes of a recently diseased dog. I didn't see any immediate results, which my friends assured was normal. They told me to be patient and wait for the second card. I was miserable during this time. Knowing that I was on the path of being happy, only made the annoyance in my life seem more unbearable. My job was unfulfilling, my co-workers bored me, I felt helpless to keep up with simple tasks, and my garden was unweeded. And really, what was the point? I couldn't keep it clear for more than a few days, and the garage continued to accumulate clutter, despite my resolve that this would be the year I'd organize it. Then I feel guilty for my own unhappiness. Because really, my life wasn't so bad. So, what right did I have to complain? It was like the promise of reprieve, only hiding my misery. Every day I came home and checked my mailbox, desperately hoping to find an index card. For weeks, I walked away from a ritual, desperate with disappointment, until my excitement faded entirely, 
and I began to loathe the ritual. I needed to have tortured myself so with the mailbox. A second recipe showed up on my bathroom counter. I found it when I brushed my teeth before leaving for work. It took a while to find the nerve to procure the ingredients. The index card's instructions were explicit. Eric told me that when he got the second card, he was convinced he was going to get arrested. But he did actually what the card said, and nothing bad happened. Nothing bad happened to him, at least. He has no idea what happened to the person he mocked and took the green card from. I think he feels guilty about it still. He gets uncomfortable talking about it, so I don't bring it up. The second recipe was a marble bourbon pumpkin pie, which is an interesting combination. It had a good taste, but the texture was unpleasant, on account of all the human hair in it. I feel bad for the lady that was out jogging. She was screaming hysterically and clutching at her hair after I jumped back into my car. Her ponytail clutched in my fist, but like Eric, I haven't been caught. I just stood there beside the path, staring at my phone, and when she passed, I reached out with one hand, grabbed her hair, and then cut it off with the scissors. I had hidden it behind my back with the other. That had to have been over a foot of hair. It must have taken her years to grow that long. Nothing changed in my life, except for lingering guilt over what I did. Of course, my stomach ached with it, although perhaps that was more because I'd eaten an entire pie. I began to look forward to the third and final card. With an anticipation came the renewal of hope. I began to prepare for it, for everything would change and I would finally be content and happy. I weeded my garden. I bought some shelves for the garage. I was more pleasant with my co-workers. And while they were still dull, and my job was still unrewarding, I at least found it was easier to ignore. The promise of happiness was like a lining over everything around me, causing it to glitter and shine. My friends even noticed the difference and asked if I'd gotten it, if I'd received a third card. Not yet. I tell them with a laugh. I'm still waiting. Then it came. I woken up and was laying on my chest. I fumbled for the bedside light and read it, trembling with excitement. My friends had warned me that this would be the hardest one. I had to plan carefully, do it over the weekend and, and choose a time when it could take some days of work. Make sure I had some money stashed away from resulting medical bills for whatever insurance refused cover. Most importantly, have first aid supplies nearby, because I wouldn't be able to go to the hospital right away. We've learned this from Sam. The index card is explicit if the recipe has to be prepared in one go. You can't harvest the ingredients and come back later. Sam. Well, Sam bled out while waiting for the tamils he stuffed with a five inch of his intestine to steal. I suppose he made the incision too big. You know that the thick pad of a muscle right at the base of the thumb? It's a group of muscles, one of which is called the abductor pollicis brevis. I had to look at that phrase to understand what the index card was telling me. I think I removed some of the neighboring muscle as well, by accident. I don't regret it. I didn't want to mess this up, after all. And it was so hard to see. I was doing with all the blood and dizzy from the pain. I thought I was going to pass out while the meat was simmering and I had had to lean on the wall staring with my remaining good hand, taking deep breaths, and telling myself to just fight through it, just keep going because I was so close. 
I made a snappy joe. I decided the muscle from my hands and mixed it with good beef and sauce and served it up in a bun. I ate ferociously, my stomach twisting with every bite, and I felt down nausea. And I was done. Then, after I swallowed the last of it, I called 911 and told them there had been a kitchen accident and I was bleeding badly. I think I passed out after that, for I only remember bits and pieces of everything else. My memory clears much later. When I'm in a hospital bed, with my hands wrapped up, and an IV dripping pain mats into my vein, the doctor told me there wasn't much they could do. The muscle was gone. The worst injury she'd ever seen in the kitchen. And they had nothing they could repair to restore the function. That hand was crippled. I told her it was okay. That it was going to be happy now. I think it was the pain meds that made me slightly delirious. She looked skeptical and went away. I am happy. Sure, the thumb on my left hand doesn't work that well anymore. But I think that's such a small cost to pay for what I've got. Happiness is something we spent our whole lives chasing. After all. And so few of us obtain it. So few of us ever know what it feels like. Well, I can say confidently that I understand what it means to be happy. After I got out of the hospital, I applied for a new position. One that would be more people oriented So I wouldn't have to type as much. And I got it. I enjoy it. It's made me get to know my co-workers better. And they're not as insipid as I thought they were. I fixed up the yard at home. So it looks nice when I have my friends over now. Which is a lot more. Because we're all happy. And I actually feel like doing things. Except... Tim. On account of being miserable with his two jobs. Try to remember to invite him anyway. But... Sometimes I forget. Last we talked, he reconsidered his index card. Because a teaspoon is much a small amount compared to how big an organ a liver is, really. It's such a small sacrifice. I tell myself this every day. I get up in the morning. I go look at myself in the mirror. I smile. And I say that it was worth the price. I am happy now. I tell myself, I mustn't ever forget that. I am happy now. And my sacrifice wasn't in vain. I wish I could tell you how to start this whole process. But I don't actually know. I started thinking how great it would be. Finally be happy. Truly happy. And a few days later... The index card just waited for me. I guess the most advice I can give is, if you're lucky enough to find a recipe in your mailbox, do whatever it says, whatever it tells you to give up, whatever it tells you to take from others, do it. It'll be worth it. You'll see. It will be worth it.